Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to another episode on Talk Architecture Podcast. And I'm your host, Naziati Mohammed Yaqub. And I have a very special um, in, uh, guest here, which is uh, Sam Zolfagarian, PhD. And hi, how are you? Hi, Nanziati. Thanks for having me here. Uh, I'm excited to talk to you more about AI and, yes, and how uh, it can like help to, our industry. Yeah, I'd like to go and give an ex a proper introduction here. You're the president of Jaeger Tech and also an AEC data and AI strategy consultant. And Jaeger Tech Consulting specializes in AI foundation and innovation training for architecture engineering and construction industry so yeah um uh, i am concerned about artificial intelligence as an educator and if people were listening to this podcast earlier and we started with this a topic earlier we are so happy that we're going to continue with this topic with a few other series so yeah that's this this big question that i need to ask even from the uh, outset which is what would the industry look like in the future with this new thing happening to our rapid technological advancement, shall we say, in architecture and engineering construction? So our industry, uh, architecture, engineering and construction is now uh, to be a slow in technology adoption. And usually when we are looking at technology trends, we are like at the bottom of the adoption line and most industries like manufacturing, healthcare, they're more advanced and much more um, faster in adoption. And it's not because uh, this industry is reluctant to adopt the technology. It's just because the complexity that we have within the workflow, the process, just mm -hmm. one project could have like over 20 subcontractors, contractors involved. So yeah. that makes it difficult to align everybody. So when it comes to AI or artificial intelligence, similar thing may happen for the next five years, the industry won't be revolutionized, but there are some aspect of what we do will be automated. So we can look at the AI from automation and augmentation. So it, some of the tasks that we do will be uh, like the repetitive tasks that people have to do it every day. Those tasks have the possibility, potential to be automated. And as a result, some part of the process will change. And we can continue to do the same thing that we are doing every day. We need to re revisit the process while we are automating some tasks. And while we are doing it, we need to consider like how AI may change our business. So for the next uh, few years, um, I can imagine that there are companies who are not only adopting AI to get rid of some repetitive mundane tasks, but they're also looking at their business. What are the new opportunities that they can uh, target? For example, in the US, um, over 65% of cities, municipalities are small. Mm. They don't have that much money budget to afford to afford like uh, big companies to help them with city planning, the infrastructure, everything. But if those companies can leverage AI to decrease their operation cost, there is an opportunity that they can get into new market. They can serve these small municipalities that are like more than 60% of what we have in the US. And I can assume that's similar to many other countries, like the budgets are limited, how AI can help us to minimize the operation cost. So the future is like more automation for mundane tasks and is like um, better services to new markets and to the client. That's a, um, something that, you know, it touches me because I have a, I'm self-employed, a small company, barely, you know, a, almost still a startup. So I did um, dabble in automation uh, for um, an online mental health um, for architects uh, service that I tried to do. But, um, and I, I do find that 
obviously, you know, when you have automation, um, you would um, cut some the shortcuts or there are less work. Like, for example, for example, uh, to get clients, for example, and if you have the right message, you can you can uh, get the right clients. So before we go into that, because I'd like really I'd like to know about the training. And when you talk about the training, we're talking about people. And then um, here, um, I think you mentioned a bit about this. And I'd like you to go deeper into how um, uh, how will AI impact roles? Like you mentioned, there are so many roles, uh, uh, architects, um, consultants, uh, contractors, and then you have people working in the architecture company with the assistants and the fresh graduates and all that. And what, you know, what, how will it impact these roles? And um, maybe in the terms of their skills and responsibilities in the architecture, engineering, construction industry. Go on. Yeah. Uh, so like in the past, uh, we look at CAD adoption, uh, like, um, computer aided design and it changed it created new roles like we had someone like technician to do the cat or we had like autocad designer to do the work so some new roles were created and then we went into the um, adoption of bim building information modeling and with BIM, we needed new roles like uh, BIM coordinator, BIM operators, and even BIM opened the new opportunities for digital twins right now. So with each adoption, new roles can be created, but when they're popping up or they're invented, we don't know about those roles. By the time that we start adopting these technologies, we learn about those gaps or caveats and we are like, oh, we are missing this role. We need someone to manage this. Similarly with AI in the future, new roles will be created uh, based on the study, even though uh, AI will uh, remove like 65 millions of jobs. In the meantime, it create about like new jobs and millions of opportunities for others. And it's applicable to our industry too. Um, it's too early to say what those jobs are because it depends. But what we know what's happening, at least in the U.S. right now, is companies have started to hire AI officer, chief data yeah. officer, chief sorry, chief AI officer, because uh, they're looking for someone to take care of those AI adoption process and strategies. If you look at design architecture firms or construction firms, they didn't have such a role in the past but now they have it. So that's the new opportunity. They're hiring uh, AI expertise who, are, who understand both uh, design and architecture world and also AI, machine learning, both what, what domains. What is the name of the role? Sorry, I heard the, like, what's the name of that role that you just mentioned? Uh, like uh, AI expertise, AI experts that they have, or uh, AI experts, Express. Eh, sorry, expert. Expert, okay. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, no expert. Wow, you know, there's already expertise in this area. Okay, go on. Yeah. So, like, we're, we're working with some engineering company that they already, uh, or architecture firm that they started to hire those um, expert people who can help them with AI adoption. And yeah. technically you need someone who understands both uh, construction, design, architecture work, as well as the technology side. That's how you can uh, make your journey faster, accelerate it. Okay, I'm just gonna, gonna, just gonna go in here and say, yes. we do, there is in architecture companies, the, you know, from the beginning, from the conception, to developing the design and later uh, when you have the detailed design and then you have, um, you know, you have to submit the drawings for tender and then you have to build it. So there are companies, I've, I've worked in one or two companies where um, the associate of that company, I'm talking about a particular role that is in existent, existence, who want to maintain a good design or what they want it to happen at the end when they build it, they would need to be involved in the conception. And then after that, they will be involved in the later stages. And it's a lot of, 
the associate in the company, especially the junior associate. And then you become, you'll be a highly skilled when you'll be able to interpret um, the, 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 what do you call the objective of the company and get designed to uh, absorb or assimilate technology um, because this is kind of complicated. You're dealing with human humans who are not skilled. You know, the the, uh, the technicians would probably be arguing with the designers, you know, for example, even before AI, even before digital um, uh, architecture, you know. So you, I'm interested in the AI expert and that this role um Apart from the chief AI officer, this role in the architecture field, uh, I mean, you're talking about engineering just now, but architecture has a lot of subjective elements in it. Do you, have you? Do you? Could you go and like mention how this this would be better done in an architecture company? When uh, is is, is the question about how that AI expert can help, like an architectural firm? Yes, yes, yeah. Go deeper yeah. into urban architecture. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so right now, uh, what's happening? There are new opportunities out there. Companies are pre-training AI models and make them available for companies to customize those AI uh, pre-trained system for what they need. And when it comes to some challenges that the architectural uh, firms are facing, there are some unique opportunities that big tech vendors are not going to address those because the market is small. Even though the market for those problems or opportunities are small, it doesn't work for tech providers to build any solutions. For me, as an architecture firm, it really matters to solve, to address that problem or bring that opportunity. So in that case, what I can do, take get help from that AI expert that I have within my company. That AI expert understand the architectural domain, it understand the technology side and is able to uh, use those pre-trained AI models out there, customize it based on what we need yeah, at our company. By our company, I mean, like an architecture firm company who can do that. Uh, that's one way that an AI expert can help them. And the other thing is the AI expert, could, like back to your point, there is someone who validated at the beginning and later, the AI expert who understand architectural uh, design, that person is able to look at the design, to look at the, that AI solutions that they're using for generating design and find out and if there's any caveat. because. No AI solutions today are perfect. They have their own limitations. They have their own, like they do hallucinating. They have some problems. We're progressing. That's great. But we need that expert person who can point out these issues at the company. I, we need to get back to the set of skills um, that are essential in the area of AI. So... What is your advice to universities that have architecture schools um, and how to equip um, architecture for, uh, the students yeah, to, to be ready for the industry? I mean, we're talking about in five years' time, but obviously mm -hmm. there have been, you can see something happening where um, there is a discrepancy or there is something that's not fulfilled by the architecture schools you know um i wouldn't go into another topic but i just want your expertise on this how do we get ready the students to yep. yeah the challenges of ai thank you yeah so if we like uh, i was looking at the news and some schools uh, kindergarten actually <laughs> kindergartens in europe they started to uh, bring ai training uh, courses to kindergarten. They want to make the next generation ready for what will happen in the future. So, but if you look at the universities right now, they're educating the next generation of workforce. And in the next few years, every company will have those AI solutions 
integrated within their ecosystem. Because now if you look at any tech solutions that you're using, they have AI piece integrated. The question is whether our next generation of workforce know how to partner with AI solutions know how to use those AI solutions. And I've, I've been, I was talking to a professor from Carnegie Mellon University uh, or CMU, and they started to let like educate their students about prompting. And students like can do that prompting, but in the meantime, they need to explain. They need to explain why that like they submitted that assignment, why they think that's correct. So while they're leveraging AI solution, they also need to think about those responses that they're getting from an AI system. That's like one way that we can understand how to partner with AI and down the road, it will decrease the risk of over-reliance because architectures, engineers, they're the one, or construction, they're the one that building infrastructure, building buildings that people live in it. And we should know that if we right. don't, we just re rely on what we get from AI system, we're risking uh, people's lives. In fact, this is something that is um, what I am concerned about, that um, when you said about understand AI and uh, the students learning how to prompt, uh, asking the right questions or, you know, uh, in the design process. And um, that is something when, uh, if, I mean, this is, makes sense because it is just a good way of approaching a subject. You need to have the right questions and then you can determine what are the prompts um, that will help you get a AI solution. And then you would find AI being useful as a tool and you're in control rather than, um, get, you know, get confused or um, mesmerized by the solutions, but don't know why you're doing it or why the, the reason you are presenting it as defending your project, for example. The students, they have to do that. So they, uh, this sort of um, curiosity, this sort of uh, inquisitiveness is necessary in architecture education. Because what's the use of the architect if they don't, they, they're not engineers. So what they, you know, the engineers go into the realm of science, almost into the realm of products and are more of less with people, to be honest. But architecture, there's kind of arts and humanities base and, you know, sociology, psychology, uh, business and economics. So, so the sensibilities of the architecture student um, would also they need to pick up those sensibilities. They still need to read um, books. They still need to uh, do those things that make them that whole identity as an architect. So that's thinking that this child, uh, the AI, you know, when people think about AI, oh, we're so afraid of this monster. Even the tutors are afraid to, to go into training to find out about the prompts. This is architecture. I'm talking about architecture. Yeah. Um, specifically, um, I find out that there are people who do not want to be wanting to know about AI in the uh, education world, you know, in architecture schools. So, um, you know, this is kind of like disconcerting because uh, if you have a monster coming, you need to control the monster, right? <laughs> so this is the... This is the, you have to understand something. It's a new challenge and, and that society demands of people. So when the university, when, when Malaysian government told the universities, instructed them to integrate AI in the curriculum, um, they kind of like freeze, you know, with not wanting to learn. So the, 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 the importance of the educators in in AI, perhaps you you have you talk about the Carnegie Mellon professor. There's that's very essential in in the discussion. Would you like to add more to this? Uh, I I I like to get back to your point about like uh, our architects. They're solving people's problem and they're really focused on human and what skills they need right now or this they already have, but they need to focus on it 
more okay. is being able to frame a problem because problem. like yeah how they can frame a problem for an ai system and how so that they can get the outcome that they are looking for and fit their needs and also how they can evaluate validate the results the responses that they get so mm -hmm. universities they need problem solving framing a problem is going to be a bigger skill and needed when we're interacting with ai systems otherwise we just give it something and it just uh, throwing out something because it has to but if we can frame the problem very well and we know how to validate we evaluate the result then that's like a good way of partnership that could happen and um I, I can expand on that based on my experience uh, during undergrad, but uh, I'm sure you have more questions. Yeah, um, this is a topic that I'm going myself going to indulge with, indulge with, um, with regard to framing a problem because, um, of course, in research generally you have the problem statement. Uh, social science or science, you objectify uh, research by um, having. Uh, read a lot of literature review and then coming up with a problem statement. So in, there's similarly in design, um, there are challenges depending on the type of problem. Uh, sometimes in urban design, there are a lot of challenges. You, you, you have the interdisciplinary of transportation with housing, for example. So that you have to understand those two aspects and then, then you can find it. So um, to me, when I went, and did design thesis with my fifth year students at the master's level. Um, what is necessary is the student come up with what are the different design problems. There could be uh, uh, from seven to 12 design problems for a design thesis. But for, uh, for a first year student, we already, the lecturers was, will not give them too many problems to solve. You get what I mean? So it could be a market. Uh, like a, a community market, or it could be a hotel. It could be, uh, you know, when there's an urban problem, then there'll be more uh, design problems. So the, the when you talk about frame a problem, I automatically think about design problem and the skill for the designer to actually identify after they research, they do the site mm -hmm. analysis, they go and make uh, whatever they interview people, um, who are the potential users of that development. And then they will come out with, oh, this is the problem that is necessary for me to, to, to. So we're going back to basics in terms of identifying problems for a designer, which is something that years, you know, centuries that we've been doing, right? Because a marketplace would be different than a transportation hub or a house or housing, you know? So you can't really use the same uh, way to design or, or you know, you, you, this, is a, this is a necessary skill. So maybe AI in the future could assist with framing a problem, you think? Uh, and by framing the problem, uh, I mentioned earlier um, was in terms of like uh, interacting with an AI system, like how I can tell it what the issue is so it can help me with what I'm looking for. Okay. And back to your point about uh, if computers like AI, sorry, AI can help you with that. So I remember uh, once I was playing with ChatGBT and I gave it a prompt and it just gave me like a result uh, that didn't make sense. And I was like, this doesn't make sense. I'm looking for X and Y. And then ChatGBT responded back, oh, then your prompt should be like this. Okay. And it gave me like uh, seven lines <laughs> of okay. the prompt that I should have uh, given to it. So what I'm seeing is like in the future, since like AI system know how they're built, they can help us uh, to frame our prompt better if it's about the prompt itself. And uh, I was playing with the tool yesterday in terms of generating a video from an image. And that tool solution, it had a manual prompt, like a prompt that I can give it myself. And then it had auto AI prompt. And what it meant was like how it can polish my prompt to get a better result. So what okay. the trend that 
that's happening, like they're trying to get their AI solutions, help users to, to give a better prompt to AI system. Okay, um, we're going into the end of part one of our yeah. podcast episode, and we'll go to part two later. But before we go to part two, I'd like you to um, just, I'd like to go and give a statement and maybe you could conclude from that statement or however you wish. Um, I think AI is necessary to be learned uh, in the design courses in architecture uh, schools um, and the, we need to be sharper. We need the students to be sharper in terms of what they want in determining, mm -hmm. um, you know, at least set the right questions from the beginning, then AI will help to frame the problem with like what you said, with a list of problems which you need to choose actually this, for a student of architecture, if they go through this, process that you mentioned, they would actually need to be do the thinking and not AI do the thinking for them in which they need to choose. Because I think that the new generation will not have any problem um, with, if they have some guidance to um, from the tutors. The tutors are still very necessary in giving the guidance on how to choose from the list of problems. Because learning is different now. I see with the coming of AI, learning is a bit different. They're, they're the same, I mean, we are human beings and then this technology is coming, but the way we approach it has to be different and people have to, um, you know, wake up and start also understanding AI and what AI can do for the architecture curriculum. Uh, but uh, my concern is people do not know these things, you know? So mm -hmm. I, I'd like you to give a conclusion to that in terms of education. Yeah. Uh, what I like about what you mentioned, it was uh, around learn how to think and not what to think. So, so with AI, a student can learn. It's not about they just give their thought to an AI system, they're dependent on an AI system. They learn how to think and uh, it's not just about what to think. And uh, it, if I go back to my undergrad, we spent two semesters doing the drawings with pen and paper. It was cumbersome, annoying. And if you made a mistake, you had to redo it again if you wanted A plus. But after two semesters, when we learned the whole thing, the foundation of design, then we were allowed to use CAD. So after that, I think it was the last time I used paper and uh, pen to draw a building. And after that, everything was in CAD, uh, AutoCAD or other solutions that we had. So back to your point about learning how to think, it's really essential for university to spend one or two semesters to teach the foundation. So when I'm interacting later with an AI system for the design, at least I have enough understanding to validate the result that I'm getting from an uh, AI solution. And also I'll be able to have a story. So when I'm talking to my architecture friends, they always have a story, inspiration behind what they do. So if I just give a prompt to an AI system, get the design, there isn't any story, any inspiration behind that. Mm -hmm. And I believe architecture are about that inspiration, about that story that they're telling about the design. Otherwise, it's just a cube of building that we built, right? So yeah. I, I see that helps them to learn how to think about the design that they get. Thank you so much, Dr. Sam. We shall meet again in part two. And um, okay, bye. Thank you so much for having me. Okay.